Hey guys, thank you for joining me in Planet Finance and today I'm going to be dispelling some financing myths. So of course, I love talking to you guys about knowledge and if you love what I bring to you, do me a favor, like, share and subscribe to my channel and of course, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think and if there's a topic that you want me to cover in Planet Finance, let me know because I'll definitely bring it to you. So let's get right into it. So Planet Finance is definitely a wide, vast area, right? There's lots of things that you can do in finance. But of course, you know, I'm talking to you about home, inter- home ownership because that's my specialty. So, and I'm pretty sure that everybody's been given some misinformation by a generation. You know, I'm talking about your parents, your grandparents, or even your current generation about buying a home and what it takes, right? So what is a generation anyways? What's, you know, so we're defined. A generation is defined by one, its name, two, the birth year, and thirdly, the age. So we have a couple of different generations that we get to hear about all the time. Probably our most popular generation right now is the millennials. And the millennials, the oldest person or the oldest millennial will be turning 40 in 2022. Then we have the next generation, my generation, Generation X. (laughs) And the oldest Generation Xer will be turning 57 this year. Then we have my parents, which my parents fall into the baby boomers. You got baby boomers one and baby boomers two. And that age range is between 67 and 76. Then we have the post-war babies. And they, the, oh, that oldest person is turning 94 this year. So how many people can say that they've gotten some information about finance from somebody post-war? I promise you it's a lot different now than it was then. And they probably gave us some information that was valid during their time. I know my grandmother told me, was nobody going to give you nothing? And that's wrong. They do. <laughs> Tell me what your grandmother or grandfather told you post-war, right? So let's get right into it. Probably one of the biggest myths is down payment. And there's a lot of things out there. Probably the biggest one, though, is that you need 20% down. And that's absolutely not true. So I'm going to start off telling you why you would want to put down 20%. And one of the reasons why many people want to put down 20% is because they want to eliminate mortgage insurance, okay? And there's ways to eliminate mortgage insurance and not put down 20%. So, but again, I'm going to be talking to you right now about the down payment and I'll touch over some of those other ways to eliminate mortgage insurance after we talk about the very first one and that's the down payment. So like we said, 20% is not required. We've got that out the gate. So let's talk about the different down payment requirements for each type of financing. So we're going to start off with conventional financing because most people definitely want to have conventional financing because it's easier to get those offers accepted. And with conventional financing, the minimum down payment is 3%. Pretty far off from 20, right? And guess what? You can get down payment assistance up to 5%. So if you get down payment assistance up to 5%, you can actually cancel out and eliminate that down payment requirement and then have an extra 2% left over to cover two other categories, and that is your escrow account and your closing costs. There's no 20% in that, right? So then another financing type is FHA, and that's another popular loan. And FHA, the down payment requirement is a little bit higher. It's 3.5%. And guess what? You can get down payment assistance up to 5%. So same as with that conventional finance, and you're able to cancel out or eliminate by covering that three and a half percent and guess what you have one and a half percent left over to cover your escrow account and your closing costs again no 20 percent in that fha either then you also have usda financing and that is actually a hundred percent financing the only caveat there is that you have to live in a rural area And you can still get up to 5% in down payment assistance to cover your escrow account and your closing costs. Then you have your VA loan that's for veterans and their spouses only. And also, you have surviving spouses that are able to use that benefit. 
that's 100% financing, and you're able to get 5% in assistance to cover your escrow and your clothing costs. So we've talked about all the financing types, and none of them require 20% down. But let's get into that eliminating mortgage insurance. So with a conventional loan, you were able to have a first lien of 80%, which would allow you to not have MI. But what, what about the extra 20% or the other 20%? Well, you're able to get a second lien that can cover 5%, 10%, even 15%, which is awesome. So by having that second lien and there would be a payment associated with that, you're able to eliminate mortgage insurance. Now, with FHA, you're able to eliminate mortgage insurance if you put down at least a 10% down payment. There's another myth with FHA that the mortgage insurance will stay on the loan for the life of the loan and forever, amen, which is not true if you put down a 10% down payment. With a 10% down payment on FHA, you will be able to eliminate mortgage insurance when you reach that 80% mark and you don't have to have a second lien. Now, obviously, with USDA, there is a small factor of mortgage insurance because it is 100% financing, and there's no way to get rid of that. And with VA, the loan is actually guaranteed by the VA, so there is no mortgage insurance there. So, I mean, that's pretty good information, right? This is something that you can definitely share with someone else and let them know 20% is not required, and you can get down payment assistance to cover the required down. And I'm going to throw another one at you. You don't have to be a first-time home buyer to receive down payment assistance. So, and what is a first-time home buyer? A first-time home buyer is someone who has not owned a home in the last three years. So if you owned a home before, but it was over three years ago, you would be considered a first-time home buyer. That's another, that's another myth. So, but remember, again, the biggest thing is that in this, I'm going to be covering some points and I'll cover them again at the end, but the first point that we covered is that 20% down is not required. The second thing that we covered, which is really awesome, is that mortgage insurance can be eliminated, especially on FHA financing. And thirdly, you are not, you, you are not limited to having to put down a down payment if you're not a first-time homebuyer. You can still receive down payment assistance and not be a first-time homebuyer. That's like three awesome things. And we're just now getting in. So let's get to the next one. I love this topic a lot as well. And that is credit. And I can talk about this for a long time. And I've done a video before. And this video here is not going to be long. But I'm just going to talk about just the, I'm giving you the cliff notes. So very first and foremost, you do not have to have a 740 credit score to buy a house. You don't even have to have a 720. You can have a credit score as low as 500 and buy a house. So I'm not going to tell you that it, not to pay your bills because sometimes life happens and sometimes during that time we do fall behind on our bills and our credit score does drop. But you can buy a house with a credit score as low as 500. And I've talked in a previous video about ways to improve your credit score. And this video is not, again, this is about dispelling myths, so I'm not going to go into it in detail but you do not have to have a 700 credit score to buy a house. And also another myth is that you have to have a very high credit score to get down payment assistance. And that's not true either. You can get down payment assistance with a credit score as low as a 580. Come on now. Again, good information here. And you do not have to be a first time home buyer either with that low credit score. I mean, I'm, I'm covering everything. Like, I'm really trying to get y'all hyped up because I'm hyped. You know, I love sharing this information and allowing people to know that they can accelerate their home buying process. They don't have to wait. And again, another thing that I'm going to share with you, and this is a big one. If you're going to utilize down payment assistance, it doesn't matter if you have a 600 credit score or a 720 credit score. The interest rate is the same. And the reason being is that you're getting the assistance. What changes the interest rate with down payment assistance is how much assistance you receive. <laughs> so
So again, I'm, I'm telling y'all everything. So it does not matter if you have a 600 credit score or a 740 credit score. If you're getting down payment assistance, the interest rate is absolutely the same. What changes the interest rate when you're getting down payment assistance is how much assistance you receive. So if you elect to get 3%, the rate will be lower. If you elect to get 4% in assistance, the rate will be higher. If you elect to get 5% in assistance, the rate will be higher. But your credit score does not change the rate when you're receiving down payment assistance. I said something there, didn't I? <laughs> so, and of course, if you want more information, you know what you need to do. I guess I should introduce myself. First of all, my name is Shalomay Armstrong, and I am the District Vice President of Gold Financial Services. And I tell all my friends and family to kiss wealth now. That's what I, because by doing that, you're going to get me, and you're going to get my team, and you're going to get factual information that's going to help you accelerate your process. So you can follow me on all the social media platforms under my name, Shalomaine Armstrong. And then I do have a Kiss Wealth Now page as well. And that is K-I-S-S-W-E-A-L-T-H-N-O-W.com. Real easy, right? So let's get into our next myth. And again, I love this one too. It's about jobs. You know, people think that you got to be on your job for forever, amen, to buy a house. And that's absolutely not true. <laughs> so again, I'm going to cover the cliff notes. I'm not going to be on this long. But of course, if you want more detailed information, I already told you what to do. Oh, I, can, I need to give you my phone number. My phone number, 214-738-4913. So I'm going to repeat that one more time. 214-738-4913. Also, if you want to email me, my email address is carmstrong at goldfinancial.com. Okay, so let's talk about these jobs. So first things first, I hear all the time, I have to be on my job at least two years before I can buy a house. And that's absolutely not true. What the lender is looking for is that you have a two-year history of working. So you could have worked at multiple places in that two-year period. That's absolutely fine. And let's say you've only been working six months, but you went to college and you, or you went to a trade school and you have a certificate or a degree for your line of work that you've been working in for a very short time. That counts in that two-year period. School counts in your two-year period of verifying your work history. A lot of people don't know that. So someone who, let's say, went to school for a year to maybe be a respiratory therapist and they've been working for a year as a respiratory therapist, you're golden. And let's say you work at two different places in that year as a respiratory therapist, you're still golden. Again, we're just trying to establish that you've been doing something for at least two years. <laughs> you cannot have been doing nothing for two years. So as long as you're used to doing something for two years, then you're able to purchase a home. And continuity of employment is important, meaning that if you are selling shoes and now you're going to be a baker, that's two different fields. And we probably want you to kind of be at that, especially if you've changed careers, be at that job a little bit longer to establish that you do like it and love it. Because, you know, we are creatures of, of habit. And that's why there is a two-year requirement of doing something just to, so that you're used to working. Because if you're not used to working, then it's, then it's assumed that you're probably not going to work. But we know you're going to work because you want to buy a house. So as long as you've been doing something for two years, you're absolutely fine. And your school counts as doing something. College, a trade school, that absolutely counts as doing something. Now I'm going to talk about another myth and I, I, I've helped a lot of people in this area who thought that they could not purchase and that is someone who's been incarcerated. A lot of people who have been incarcerated come out and they think they cannot buy a house and that's not true. Many people who are incarcerated while there will complete a trade, even receive a degree and that counts as your work history because they're actually doing something 
while they are there. And then when they come out and enter the workforce, even with a history there's, and they're working, then that is continuity of employment. As long as we're able to, again, verify that two-year history, you can buy a house. And even if you were incarcerated, you qualify for down payment assistance. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I can't get, I can't. You definitely, you definitely can. So I'm going to sh- sh- stop there because there's many more things I can talk about. There'll definitely be a part two. I'm coming back with it. And I'm praying that you got something from this. Again, you can buy a house with less than 20% down. You can buy a house with a credit score as low as 500 You can get down payment assistance no matter your FICO score, as long as you have at least a 580. And remember, the interest rate is the same. What changes the interest rate is how much assistance you receive. And you do not have to be on your job for at least two years. You just have to be doing something for two years, and we have to be able to verify it. So with that being said, do not forget to kisswealthnow.com and do me a favor like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Share this video because it's definitely going to help somebody. And if you have more more questions, reach out to me because I love sharing knowledge. Y'all be blessed and I pray I get a chance to talk to you soon. Bye.